A rare sight in Nigeria. A lesbian couple out, proud and in public. But they're taking a big risk. Same-sex marriages and civil unions are illegal in Nigeria, punishable by up to 14 years in prison. On 7th January 2014, Jordan signed the anti-gay law, the law that bans any gay activity in Nigeria. Any Western nation that's so firm that they don't like us passing this bill, that becomes a business. This practice has no place in our culture, it has no place in our religion, it has no place anywhere in Nigeria. To me, the 14 years is just, is so, is, is, is very, very mild. I will, I will even advocate a, a, a life jail. Our such people should even be trial for murder because they want to bring to an end the existence of humanity. Although it was welcomed by many in Nigeria, but the United States would not take it anymore. Today I want to speak directly to you, the people of Nigeria. Nigeria is a great nation and you can be proud of the progress you've made. Together you've won your independence. No, no, wait. So Obama said that together we have won our independence. So this is the kind of independence that they gave to us, Abi. This is the kind of independence, the ones that they are still the ones that are choosing our leaders and they are the ones making laws, telling our leaders what they will do and what they will not do, keeping us in abject poverty. You see how wicked these people are. Continue, Obama. Continue. Go ahead emerge from military rule and strengthen democratic institutions. Now you have a historic opportunity to help write the next chapter of Nigeria's progress by voting in the upcoming elections. That was Obama telling Nigerians how to vote. Obama made this statement in 2014, even when he knew that Jonathan was going for a second term, but he had already written Jonathan off and advised Nigerians to write the next chapter, meaning that Jonathan's chapter was over. The level of interference by the American, Obama's government was very overwhelming. It's not as if I couldn't have won the election even with that. From this moment on, things began to change badly for Jonathan. Just a month after the anti gay law, the Chibok girls were kidnapped. Whether the Chibok girls' kidnap was a political thing or not, the result was that Jonathan went from this to this and this. It was becoming a hell for him. And this was the moment that America was waiting for. The time to crucify Jonathan. The time to tell the world that he is weak. Immediately the Chibok issue came up. We expect Nigerians to be concerned. How do we get these guys out? Within a couple of days, we saw people going to the US with bring back our girls' placards. How? Yes, this was carried out by Obama and his Western allies to make the administration of Good Luck Jonathan look weak. They made him look weak in the very eyes of Nigerians. So they started their propaganda. Immediately, Good Luck Jonathan refused to uh, back the LGBT community. Rather, what he did was to sign the anti-gay law. Obama, that was after that, right after that, the Chibok girls happened. And I know that that Chibok girls was a propaganda. So right after that, immediately the Chibok girls took place. We started seeing Obama's wife and so many other uh, Hollywood celebrities. So many of them, actors and actresses, carrying this black hat. Bring our girls back. Bring our girls back. That was what we saw on the media. This was a perfect plan. Okay, straighted by Obama himself and his administration. Why? And of course... Uh, the Mrs. Obama received one of those placards. Remember, a group of people had already formed a coalition, which they called APC. Their only plan was to remove Jonathan from office, and Obama wanted to remove Jonathan too. That was how the two forces formed against Jonathan. They became a match made in heaven or hell, depending on what you think. APC became the driving tool that Obama was going to use. That was how APC's campaign became stronger and stronger. There were even some reports that David Asarod, Obama's political analyst, who is best known for using propaganda to market his candidate, was the man behind APC's propaganda against Jonathan. We have hired people from all over the world, and those of you in the social media tell you all kinds of lies. Yes, they hired people from all around the world. They did it so well that even most members of Jonathan's party joined APC. You might be wondering, how did it get to this point? And why was Obama so interested in what happens with Nigeria's anti-gay law? 
it was because gay rights has always been a big part of Obama's campaign. I believe that gay couples deserve the same legal rights as every other couple in this country. Our journey is not complete until our gay brothers and sisters are treated like anyone else under the law. For if we are truly created equal... It's a victory for gay and lesbian couples who have fought so long for their basic civil rights. Obama is the first American president to support same-sex marriage, and he wanted to make the whole countries of the world do the same. If you listen to Obama's words, smooth words, concerning the equality towards the gay community, you will think that he cares about them, but you will not know that that smooth words is full of deception and anger, rage against humanity. Sometimes I feel like this Obama of a person is, is the real antichrist that we have been expecting or anticipating. Or if he is not the real antichrist, it means that he will pave a way for the entrance of antichrist, just as it was described in the Bible. Now the question is, why is Obama so obsessed with gay rights? Why is he so obsessed with the fact that he wants all the corners of the earth to adopt this wickedness of gay rights? There is one thing that I am certain about this Obama and all the other people that are worshipping the devil. There is one thing I am certain about them. When you see them pushing a law, there is something behind it. Because if it is not that this law will have a negative impact in humanity, they will not do it. There is something that they want to achieve with it, which is what I'm about to show you. You remember the story in the Bible where a certain man went and invited a native doctor to go and curse the Israelites because he saw that the Israelites were so blessed and they were so productive in everything that they were doing. They were waxing very strong. So he went and invited a native doctor, took the man to a hilltop and asked him to curse the Israelites. And when the man wanted to start cursing the Israelites, rather what the man was doing was blessing the Israelites. He tried again, it was also the same case. He now told the man that invited, that paid him, that invited him, that he, it's not his, his fault, that he cannot curse these people. That God has blessed them and nobody can curse them. So due to the anger of that man wanting to make sure that he punished the Israelites, he, he kept on pressing the man. The man told him that there is only one way to curse these people. And he was astonished. He said, okay, just tell me. He said, unless you can get them to sin, to start living in sin, a sinful lifestyle, that is the only way their God will turn his back on them and you can be able to curse them, you will succeed. What did the man do? He went and invited beautiful women from his kingdom who came to the land of Israel, down, uh, dressed almost naked, dancing sexually in front of the Israelites. And the Israelites, they fell, for, they fell to that. All of them, the men there, all of them fell. And they took these people and started fornicating with them. So after that, God became angry and turned his back on them. They went to a war and they lost. They lost. Their people, with Israelites, we are killed. They were murdered in high numbers. So when they came back, Gideon, at that time, who happens to be the ruler of Israelites, when they came back, he fell down and he was crying unto God, crying, wailing before God, asking God why he allowed those people to kill them, why he was, why he was against them. Then, as he was there making those prayers, asking God, a mes message came to him that there is an Israelite that is fornicating with one of the foreign girls that we are brought to seduce them. So what did Gideon do? Upon hearing that, he angrily took his spear, went into the guy's tent, and as the guy was still on top of that lady, he thrust his spear through the heart of the Israelite and the foreign lady that he was fornicating with. He killed them instantly. And God said, In so doing, that you will remove iniquity from amongst you. So the, the anger of God left them and God forgave them. What I say, what I'm saying is that Obama, he knew the law. He is very much aware that he cannot succeed. Or all of them, all the wicked agendas they, they want to impose on the world today in terms of control, which is taking us towards the end time, that they will not succeed unless they 
introduce sin that it is only sin because when they want to introduce this wickedness in the world where the spirit of god is still available that god will disgrace them god will not allow it to happen so what they are doing is that they are introducing sin first so that god will turn his back on us that is the only way that they can dominate and succeed in their activities so they know they are very much aware this is why sometimes i even imagine whether these people whether these guys they are reading the bible they know the lord they know how this thing works so that is why he is making sure that every part of the world they involve in this gay rights and when you hear about it you think that these people they care about the gay community they don't it's not their business they don't care about humanity they are only doing the will of the devil that is pushing them that is why he is obsessed with making sure that every part of the country every world that every leader of any country of every country adopt this wickedness of a gay right because they are very very certain that it will provoke god to anger which will make god to turn his back on us that they can be able to dominate so let's continue with the exposition so that it will look like a normal thing and become globally accepted in the name of human rights he even promised to protect gays all over the world to those who face violence and intimidation every single day and who live under governments that have made the existence of anybody who's lgbt illegal we need to send a message to those folks. I want them to hear from the President of the United States. We believe in your dignity and your equality, and the United States stands with you. Maybe you have to listen to that again. He said, to those, those who face, face violations violence, and intimidations every single day, every single day and, and who live under, under governments government that have made the existence of anybody who is LGBT illegal, we need to send a message to those folks. I want them to hear from the President of the United States. We believe in your dignity and your equality, and the United States stands with you. According to the New York Times, the gay vote was crucial in Obama's three election in 2012. Most gays in the United States voted for Obama because of the voice and support he gave to the community. And CNN also reported that the LGBT community not only made the difference in 2012 by trooping out to vote for Obama, they were also his top donors. So the people that made the most donations to support Obama's 2012 campaign were the gays in the United States and all over the world. So when Jonathan signed this anti-gay law, he touched the bad side of Obama. The level of interference by the Ameri Obama's government was very overwhelming. If a foreign country, whether African country or even uh, America or any other country, interferes with our own elections, we should mention it. The next thing that happened was that Obama indirectly stopped recognizing Jonathan as president. He even sent the then United States Secretary of State, John Kerry, to Nigeria on the eve of the election, which many saw as an improper move because John Kerry, as an official of the American government, flew down to Nigeria less than two months to the election, met shortly with Jonathan and went to have a private meeting with Buhari even though Buhari was not a government official as at then, but was. Now take a look at the person that Obama sent. Look at the people that he's having meeting with. You can see Buhari there and you can see Tinibu there. Just to take a look at them, you see Tinibu there. And you now wonder, who did Buhari hand over to? Is it not Tinibu? You see the American influence. If you have been following me in this channel, I have been telling you guys that Tinibu is not our problem. Buhari that made or that started this this wickedness this hardship on nigerians it is not our problem our problem has been right from the onset the westerners western influence on us and africa at large just an opposition candidate an american official coming to nigeria to meet an opposition candidate two months to the election that tells you something to send in that person to nigeria at the eve of election after obama even issued a statement directing Nigerians to vote for the next chapter. That tells you something. And we should not sweep this under the carpet. Aside all this, there were even some reports that 12 Northern governors were invited to the United States for a private meeting in the White House. All these events leading to the election made it obvious that Jonathan's days as president was over. No wonder he made that call to Buhari, considering defeat even before the results were fully announced. The election was over even before it was conducted. 
and uh, by this time, then of course already I've considered the vid to the president, so that was completely over. And I knew why I considered the vid because I was more interested in the country than myself, which I advised the other politicians to be more interested in the country than themselves. Without the country, there will be no president. Now, as you can see, as this wickedness we are going on in our country, what did our pastors do? Our pastors that we relied on, that claimed to have been hearing the voice of the Lord, what did they do? Let me show you what they did during this time. Nigeria, uh, many of us, what we want, we don't really know. I blocked with you one time about Papa Adeboye. So many Nigerians now blast me. Complex now, leave money to take in that direction. See what in Nigeria has now talk about. Watch the video carefully oh, and drop your opinion on the comment section. If you agree with them, oh, share on. Pastor Adeboye of Redeem, you protested against Jonathan that was selling for less than 200 naira with you and Tunubo. So I want you to take a look at the right side of this video that you are watching now. You will see uh, Baba Adeboye here holding a sign. This were the days of Good Luck Jonathan when he was also protesting against Good Luck Jonathan. He was protesting, telling his members that Good Luck Jonathan is a weak president. So you can imagine that Adeboye was also the tool of um, uh, Obama and um, Western influence in Nigeria. Adeboye was working with them. That was why in his uh, 70th anniversary birthday, which was held in UK, he came out. That was the very day that he said that his coalition, his alliance with you. And immediately he said that that was when I realized that this person, is, he has been compromised all along. As in this person is gone. He is not with us anymore. That he is not close to God. That this person, the spirit of God has left this man far, far away far far that we can even imagine that this person is not with us and he has been deceiving nigerians since that time all till this up to this moment and some gullible nigerians are still following this man so by that time up to this moment god did not tell him the wickedness that he were, that he was about to inflict on nigerians by accepting this man by backing these people god did not tell him but tomorrow he will still come out and tell us that he is hearing the voice of god people are asking which god is he hearing his voice look at him just pay attention. You are not keeping quiet that Nigerians are buying for a one five now. And you think you have peace of mind? Lai Lai, you can never have peace of mind. My name is Yiki, Nami Toka. They say don't challenge elders. Don't challenge man of God. I am challenging you, Pastor Adeboye, if you be man of God. Come outside. Come and show the world the God will call you. Call out your God, make it come outside. Come, come fix Nigeria for us. Man of God, no go keep quiet when people they self-way for one five. The same person where you are now, take rebel against people where they self-way. Less than 200 naira. You people come outside against Jonathan to tell us that Jonathan is a failure. You have to come outside now, Pastor Adeboye, and come and tell the old Nigerians that Tunubu administration is a total failure and needs to be shut down now. My name is Siki. Anybody, anybody I repeat for this Nigeria, we have shown ourselves. So we now get power. I want to see the. If Pastor Adeboye come outside, come address the, is this issue, this hardship waiting for this country, I will take down that video. But if he no come outside, I will continue to drag him. Because he protests against good luck. During good luck, he protests against good luck. Wait till make an office, wait till make an office protest now. Wait till make an office say something reasonable about the hardship where they go on for Nigeria. Only for him to come outside and tell us say Nigeria gets spiritual problem. What we say the person where they deal with us now, Yoruba man. Is it because of saying himself now, Yoruba man? We go make a come tell us say Nigeria has a spiritual problem. What person they deal with us face to face? If you come outside today, come address this issue when they for granted, I will take down the video. I make that video, make it get to them. To, for him to know, say, what did he do during the time of good luck? Make him do them now. Make him know they bias. People, they suffer. For, only him, for him to come outside, I can't tell us, say, uh, uh, Nigeria has a spiritual problem. When Tinibu, they deal with person face to face. Who make Tinibu spiritual? Who can make uh, Tinibu invincible now? Somebody they deal with us only for him to tell us that Nigeria has a spiritual problem. But that's how we good luck with Nigeria no get spiritual problem, no physical problem. We they face something like this, say we, uh, uh, Nigeria gets spiritual problem. How Nigeria take get spiritual person, uh, problem where we say person they deal with us like this face to face? If he come outside and address this issue, I will take down that video. But as long as he no come outside, I can address this issue. Ogbeni he never day free, oh. He never day free. Because he no go do one, then leave one, and then he expect to get peace. He no go get peace. We go continue to talk about him matter. 
I see you want protest against good laws, so make it do them now because people husbands don't they thief. People children don't they thief to eat food. Make him do the right thing. If he don't do the right thing, we will continue to the dragon. And let me also make this clear that Baba Adeboye, Kumuye, and all the rest of all these pastors that have uh, mega churches in Nigeria, they are the problem that we are having in this country. If we must have revolution, revolution in this country, it must start from the church. Thanks and God bless. Please be respectful with your comments. Also, please click the like, click the notification bell, and subscribe to this channel.